time to get out and ride something new in the Quebec City area. Woo! <laughs> this is the never ending story at La Massif de Charlevoix. I've heard about this trail for a while. I wanted to get out on it. Woo! Yeah! My buddy Gab leading the way from MTBQC. He has a ton of great YouTube videos checking out all the QC stuff, Quebec City region. It's been probably five years since I've been able to ride with him. <laughs> I'm trying. Yeah. This is my fourth adventure in Quebec City this week. A very amazing sponsored trip. Quebec City mountain biking. The city of Quebec tourism. Very awesome to be along and get to make these videos and show them off for everyone. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh man, you gotta have the air pressure in your tires. These rocks will jump out and bite you. Uh oh. I think we're racing the rain today. I started the day at the bottom which at the bottom parking lot I just followed Google Maps <laughs> I was supposed to be in the top parking lot so I cost us probably an hour of time oh. Oh. Gab was the first person I saw who had an Asagai tire front and rear inspired me Oh, here we go. <laughs> oh, little jump. <laughs> wow, look at this forest. Amazing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man, that's good stuff. The rocky burns. Oh, nailed it. <laughs> Gab's behind me now. I'm sure he'll have some footage on Instagram, Reels, TikTok, something. <laughs> oh, Gab was telling me one of the co founders of Cirque du Soleil bought this place, <sighs> sold his shares, <laughs> and gave back to the community by buying this ski resort and fixing it up. Uh-oh. <laughs> Tight stuff. And Cirque du Soleil actually started up the road from here. <laughs> I tried for the high line at my own peril. Oh man. <laughs> Action packed. You get the speed going. There's all kinds of... <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Woo <laughs> yeah, zero G. <laughs> nice little pump track. Whew. 
<laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> oh, the straight line. Oh, that was the better line. <laughs> Natural developed. Now we'll finish our run on the green trail and Gab said it can actually be pretty intense if we're going fast on it. So well, let's do it. And very mindful if there's any beginners. I think my hubs got loud again. That's going to cost me a lot in grease if I'm going to keep doing this. So probably just going to get different hubs. A little more silent. Get the strong silent type. I think I'll just get the normal type actually. I found a uh, the Onyx hubs to really be slow, heavy, expensive. They're quiet, they're silent for sure. Infinite engagement. But I remember when I switched into the, the Ibis Blackbird Send wheels that just had the Ibis white label hubs and immediately I felt faster on the bike. I was like, uh-oh, something's different here. And it was totally with the, the hubs because the wheels are heavier a little bit. That might help too, but there was definitely a sensation of when I let off the brakes, my bike would go. <laughs> yeah, this is... <laughs> For a beginner rider, this would be pretty intense, I think. Whoa! <laughs> wow. Oh, that rock. The tire eater. Tire slasher. Wow, this is going on forever, too. I think this run top to bottom is like four miles. 1800 feet of descent, something that in that range, maybe 1500, 300 meters, or no, 500 meters. <laughs> nice. Wow. <laughs> cool. <laughs> oh, this is nice. Man, the fine art of building a berm. It's complicated all these trails evolve over time. One of the things Seth always talks about with Berm Park is that at first everything rolls kind of slow and then it gets bedded in and goes faster. Whoa. Okay. So I think we're kind of at the bottom, kind of, sort of. It's the gondola section. Bonjour. Bonjour. Ça va bien? Yeah. Merci, thank you, have a nice day. All right. The rain has started and this is a long way up. <laughs> yeah, just hold off a couple more hours. Let us get on the trail. Maybe if we're in the trees, we won't feel it. Gab was saying now maybe it's a good thing that I parked at the bottom because if we're at the bottom, 
and there's a chance of a thunderstorm, they shut down the lift, then what? Have to take an Uber back <laughs> around 30 minutes to the top. Aw, oh, man, here, here it comes. Come on. Yeah, nice and dry in here, no problem. I had to take my glasses off because they're too dark, and then, <laughs> oh, it's a, a losing combination. I'm still hunting for good glasses. I will take any suggestions. I think I need to get the transition type. Whoa, okay. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Slab action. Wow. Ha <laughs> ha. Cool. What's going on? No fear. He just floated. Floated right it's down it. <laughs> it feels like a shower. <laughs> it's spraying just perfectly. <laughs> the rain kept coming down harder and harder, but we made it safely to the bottom. And it turns out it was nice that I parked at the bottom of the resort because they stopped the chairlift. Every single mountain biker was stuck at the bottom for who knows how long. But we were able to load up everything that was wet, muddy, and dirty into the rental car and drive to the top, where the sun was shining nice and bright. We headed over to Chez Bolduc, a nice fast food roadside restaurant. I got the fake Big Mac and Gab got a big old bucket of poutine. The perfect post-ride meal. I have been eating really good on this trip, and the day before on the rest day, I just walked around old Quebec City. I saw so many amazing sights, some great people watching, but above all else, some great food. Old Quebec City has this amazing European vibe. If you don't want to hop on a flight to France or Prague, it's right here, not that far away. You still have to change your money to Canadian <laughs> and you still have to change your language to French, but you get all that good European vibe in North America. I've got one more adventure on the way from Quebec. I can't wait to show you, but until then, do me a favor, go ride something new and maybe I'll see you on the trail.